Hey, it's Chris McCord, and today I want to take you on a speed run on deploying your own large language model on a Flyo GPU and integrating that back into your application. So our goal here is to take this to-do application, have the user click suggest, and it generates some to-dos for the user based on their to-do list or maybe what's in their current to-do list. So right now it's generating these synthetic to-dos, but our goal is to make this somewhat intelligent. So let's go ahead and go back to our application here, and we can see we have this synthetic suggest to-dos function. So we have this stubbed out in the UI already, and that UI code is just going to say, you know, for each to-do that you want to recommend, call the function for me, and within this function, we update the UI, and then when we're done, we bulk insert into the database. So really, we just need to go back here and make this intelligent. So to do that, we need to get some data for the database first. So first, we can say, okay, get the current to-do list title from the database, then fetch all the to-do titles for that list, and then pass this to, to do some LLM magic. So if you've ever used any of the OpenAI APIs or anyone in the LLM space, everyone's kind of standardized on this OpenAI API format. We can call some large language model at some HTTP interface, and we can give it some messages to simulate a chat. And in this case, we're running Olama. So Olama is a library that makes it very easy to get up and running with large language models. We're going to run that locally. It runs on Mac, Linux, and Windows, and you can also deploy it. And that lets us just not have to know anything about LLMs, and we can just test this thing from HTTP with curl commands. So I'm running Olama locally. And now that I have this running here, we can see kind of how I'm prompting it. Prompt engineering is just a fancy way to say that we are just doing complete guesswork, trial and error, until we get the magic black box LLM to give us output that we want to be able to use on our program. So in this case, I give it a system prompt saying, you're basically an assistant that the user provides to-do lists with and you give to-do list responses. You don't preface your messages because it's kind of hard to get these smaller models to not tell you like, hey, thanks for, I'm here to help. And we also tell it critically that we want to be able to uh, suffix the to-dos with this dash 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 slash in, which it makes it easy programmatically to parse out in real time the to-dos. And then we give it these four shot prompts where we give it some examples in the chat. So I say the user role is going to say, I have a to-do list, I want three to-dos. Here are the to-dos already in the list. And then the assistant says this response. And we go back and forth, give it some request responses. And then at the very end of that, we give it the role user, but with the dynamic context coming from the user, like the list title and their current to-dos. And then we pass it off to the magic black box, which spins up some electrons through a GPU and magic comes out the other side. And when that magic comes out, it's gonna stream through HTTP back to us in chunks. While we parse the JSON chunks, we look for this content that falls out and it's going to be basically each token that it's generating. And if we accumulate those tokens and we see dash dash dash, that means everything before must have been a recommended to do title. And then we call the users function with their accumulator. And that's it. So we're running this locally again. So we're hitting this local host. And now if I run this and refresh, we should be able to get some kind of reasonable response here. So I'm going to click suggest on car maintenance. And this is going to be running locally on my Mac GPU. So it takes a little bit, but it's actually reasonably fast. And it also gave us actually reasonable responses. So this is using Llama 27B, which is about four gigabytes in size. So it's small enough to ship around in a Docker image, but it's smart enough and fast enough that we can actually get reasonable responses out of it. And even when we want to run things like against this workout plan, something like the users type like Monday colon with a more complex to do, it actually is going to look at that and give us reasonable results, right? It knows that like, okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday would naturally come next. And this is a reasonable recommendation for a workout plan, right? So this is actually giving me great results in this model that's only about four gigabytes in size. So this is exactly what we want, but how do we deploy this, right? And how do we deploy this in a way that's not gonna break the bank? Well, Fly IO GPUs are just regular Fly machines attached to a GPU and Fly machines can be started and stopped automatically. So we're only really paying for what we use. And anything that runs in a Docker container can run on Fly. So what I've done is just taken Olama, I have a Docker file here. So if we clone this uh, Git repository here, we can kind of see how this works, but it's just an easy way for me to be able to deploy this running on fly with some pre-canned configuration. So the Docker file isn't important, but the critical part is we have a build step in the Docker file that's gonna prefetch Llama 27B. So we're gonna bake in that four gigabytes into the Docker image because it's small enough to fit in the Docker image, right? We'd, if it was larger, we'd have to put it on a volume, mount that volume or put it into object storage. But since it's small enough, we can bake it in at the build time into the Docker image. And then we have a server script that basically just runs Olama, waits for Olama server to be up. And then we run the large language model with run Llama 27B and that's it. So the only thing we need to configure is our Flytama file. So instead of my Olama app, I'm gonna give it an app name, like let's say L27B is my app name. The VM size is in A100, which is gonna be our NVIDIA A100. 
And then critically, we're only running this on the Fly private IPv6 network. So only apps in this Fly organization can access this server at this internal port. And what's nice about this is we don't have to worry about standing up some authenticated endpoint configuring services, right? We can just say, nope, if you're on the private network within this orbit, you can reach it. And then the only other thing we need to do is provision a private five class address for that. But first we have to create the app. So we'll say fly apps create, we'll call it L27B, create it in my personal org. So that's up and running. So now we want to allocate a private IP6 network uh, address for it. So I can say fly IP allocate v6 private. And what this gives me is then a app name like l27b.flycast address that will then be able to wake the app up on demand. Because what we want is not to be paying for a GPU at all times. We want the machine to auto stop. So we set auto stop true and auto start true. So that means any request that gets routed even from the private network to this application, it will automatically start the machines if none are started. So this flycast address lets this be discoverable on DNS and auto uh, woken up when requests go get sent to it. So now that that's allocated, I can run fly deploy. And the first time this deploys, it's going to pull the Olama image down. But since this is already cached in the organization, it actually is going to borrow that image locally. So every time you deploy this, it's not going to have to download that every time. So this app is actually already up and deployed attached to a GPU that quickly. So if I run fly logs here, we should be able to see this thing come up online. Okay, so the it's waiting for Olama to start up. And now it is configuring Cloud Hypervisor. It's still waiting. So Olama serve is going to start Olama, but then it takes a while to load the model. And here we go. There's a log saying running Olama 27B. So this thing is up and running, waiting for a request. So if we go back to our to-do application, since I'm running, I could, I could deploy this application and then anyone uh, deployed in the organization will be able to talk to this Flycast address, but I'm actually running WireGuard locally, which means I'm joined to the Fly private network from my local laptop. So I don't even have to deploy this to play with it. So I can say, instead of hitting localhost, I'm actually going to hit the l27b.flycast address. And that thing is gonna automatically be wired up to that Fly machine. And it's running, it knows the port that it's running on because I, I put it in the Fly toml. So that should be enough to actually allow me to hit this GPU powered uh, Llama 27B server. So let's go ahead and refresh and let's try it out. There we go. And you can see it was actually much faster because this is running on a NVIDIA A100 card. So let's try that over here. There we go. So now we're running Llama 27B on fly infrastructure. If we stop sending requests to this thing, it's going to automatically stop. The next time a request gets sent, it boots up and you'll be serving requests in you know, 10 to 15 seconds, even loading that whole LLM in memory. So that's it. That's how you can run Flyo GPUs. You can have them auto scale to add additional instances based on the number of requests that are being served. And it doesn't take much to integrate these things and have them do useful work in your application. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks a lot.